The Greek philosopher Aristotle taught that an object twice as heavy would fall twice as fast. So if I take these books and I lift them to the same height and I let them drop, the two physics textbooks should fall much faster and hit the table first. Well, that didn't happen. Aristotle was wrong. And if we look back, you can see that the two objects hit the table at the same time. The first person who noticed this was Galileo, and he suggested the reason for our misconception is that because when we think of lighter objects, we think of things like this piece of paper. And it will hit the table a bit more slowly. But that's because of air resistance. In fact, if we take this paper and remove the air resistance and drop it from the same height, they hit the table at the same time. So what we're trying to say is that gravity has the same effect on falling objects, regardless of how heavy they are. And that effect is an acceleration. So we call this the acceleration due to gravity. We say that the acceleration due to gravity is a lowercase g. And it will be about 9.8 meters per second squared when we are near the surface of the Earth. So you're not like out in space very far away where the Earth's uh, pull is smaller. And we ignore air resistance. Sometimes we call that drag. So as long as we are near the surface of the Earth and we ignore the effect of air, we can say that the acceleration due to gravity for any object is 9.8 meters per second squared, regardless of how heavy the object is. So this allows us to change all of our motion equations because this 9.8 meters per second squared, this is an acceleration. So I know that if an object is falling in the air, um, the acceleration is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. So here's how we change our motion equations. First, let's start by writing any of the motion equations that have acceleration in them. Um, so far, we've got that the final velocity is equal to the acceleration times time plus the initial velocity. The position of an object is half of its acceleration with time plus the initial velocity times time plus the initial position. Um, we have a motion equation that's 1 half v plus v naught times t, but that doesn't have an acceleration in it, so it would be the same. It doesn't change. Um, and instead, we would do this, where we would jump to the ain't got no time equation. 2 times the acceleration, delta x, plus the initial velocity squared. Okay, so now what I can do for, for my free fall motion problems is I can take x and replace it with y. And anything that has an acceleration, I can replace that with g. But I need to be careful um, because the acceleration due to gravity is always down. Gravity always pulls things down. So I'm going to need to make this a negative g. Any, anywhere I have an acceleration, I need to make it a negative g because it's pulling the object down. So here's how this changes our equations. For the first equation, we would get v equals not a, but negative gt plus the initial velocity. For the second, um, first instead of saying x, I would say y equals one half of the acceleration would become negative one half g t squared plus v naught t plus instead of x, we would say y not because why not uh, and then for the final velocity equation we would have v squared equals not 2 times a but negative 2g and instead of delta x I would say delta y plus v naught squared okay so now we have a new set of motion equations where basically we've written y instead of x and negative g instead of a I can now use any of these motion equations for an object that is in free fall, which is what we described um, earlier, when the object is near the surface of the Earth and we are ignoring the effect of air. Let's do a couple problems. Tom Petty drops the mic from the top of the building. Rip. It takes three seconds for the mic to hit the ground. How tall is the building and how fast was the mic going just before it hit the ground? Okay, so first I'm going to draw a building, the ground, and little tiny stick man Tom Petty dropping the mic great let's talk about the very first thing I know 
I know that because Tom Petty drops the mic, the initial velocity is zero. That's the most important part. Then it tells me three seconds is what it takes for the mic to hit the ground. So it takes three seconds to get right to the ground. That's it. That's all I know. Well, now there's this unwritten given piece of information. And it's that the acceleration is going to be negative g, or negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, if you prefer, um, you can just say g equals negative, sorry, not negative, g equals 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, and then let the equations that you have with negative g, these equations, be what you put the 9.8 into. Then it asks me to figure out how tall is the building. So a couple of things. First of all, I could say that that wants me to find um, y not, and then I can set the final position to zero. So let's draw that for a second. I know that I mean, we'll just say you drop it from the the edge of the building. We're saying the initial height is what you dropped it from, and you know that when it's at the ground, I can decide that the ground is at a height of zero. And that's actually a common thing in physics. Deciding that the ground is zero is called choosing the ground. Okay, so now I know the initial velocity is zero, the time is three seconds, g is 9.8. I want to find the initial position it was dropped from, and I know that my eventual height, ground, that it hits is zero. If I look at my equations and find the equation with all of these variables in it, it will be y equals negative one half gt squared plus v naught t plus y naught. Before I um, rearrange anything in this equation, I'm going to get rid of anything that's zero. So y is zero, which means I can set that equal to zero. And my goal is to try and find this initial height. So I'm going to try and get, every, oh, sorry, I missed something. The initial um, velocity is also zero. So that means this term goes away. So that's zero, and that's zero. Much easier. So plus the initial velocity. OK. So to solve for y naught, it's as easy as just adding 1 half gt squared, that whole term, over to the left. And I can go ahead and start plugging in that information. Half of 9.8 meters per second squared times 3 seconds, the whole thing squared. So half of 9.8 is 4.9 meters per second squared. And then 3 times 3 is 9 seconds squared. So the seconds squared cancel out, leaving me with meters, which is what I want. And I get 49 times 9, which is... 44.1. Okay, so I know if the ground was zero, the initial height the mic was dropped from was 44.1. So that is the height of the building. Okay, now let's talk about how we would figure out how fast the mic is going just before it hits the ground. So to do that, I would just need to think about the equation that lets me find velocity uh, as it changes with the acceleration, which in this case is our 9.8. So our equation is v equals negative g t plus v naught, um, where in this case I know that my initial velocity is zero, so it goes away. And finding the uh, final velocity is as simple as taking negative 9.8 meters per second squared and then multiplying that by three seconds. So that is going to give me 29, negative 29.4. Um, that second squared cancels out, so negative 29.4 meters per second. Now, that negative is important because this object is moving down. So it will have 
a final velocity that's negative um, because it's going down. Now, here's the thing though. Because this question asks how fast, that does technically mean that it is only interested in the magnitude of this velocity. So if this was a multiple choice question, you could choose a positive 29.4 meters per second because that is the speed, that is the, the magnitude or the fastness of this velocity. But if it asks you to find the velocity and it gave you a positive or a negative option, the negative option would be correct because we decided that negative was down when we put this negative g in for the acceleration. Okay, great. Let's do one more problem. You drop a Mountain Dew from the top of a crater on the moon where the acceleration due to gravity is 1.6 meters per second squared. Your super fancy moon equipment tells you the Mountain Dew is traveling 10 meters per second just before it hits the ground. How high is the crater? Okay, so here you are on a crater on the moon. And the moon is crazy and it's got this rocky surface. Okay, so you drop the Mountain Dew. Congratulations. We're very excited. Do the do. You drop the Mountain Dew, which tells you right away, since you drop it, the initial velocity is zero. And you're told that the acceleration due to gravity is 1.6 meters per second squared. So in this problem, you are not near the surface of the Earth. You're on the moon. So they've gone ahead and told you that near the surface of the moon, uh, gravity is different at the moon, and so the effect of gravity and acceleration is going to be less. So the acceleration due to gravity is 1.6 meters per second squared. We can still use all of our motion equations with negative g in them, it's just now I'm going to use 1.6 instead of 9.8. Okay, and it goes, you know that it is traveling, ooh, 10 meters per second just before it hits the ground, so it tells you how fast the dew is going right before, that moment, right, right before it hits the ground. Mountain Dew is just so good, I love it so much. Okay, so that velocity it has right before it hits the ground. Then it asks, how high is the crater? Well, that's basically like asking um, if you, at the bottom, say that your final height is zero, what is your initial height? Just like we were doing before. Okay. So I know that the final height is zero, and it really wants me to figure out what is that initial height. Oh, I'm sorry, the initial height. Okay, well you'll notice that I'm not given any information about time, which is a giveaway that we are supposed to use the ain't got no time equation. Of course, we've modified it. Instead of a, we use negative g, so negative two g. Um, and this would be delta y instead of delta x. Okay, uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to get ooh, we're going to get rid of anything that is zero. So the initial velocity is zero. Um, and actually, this is a time where it might be important for us to sort of expand the delta y. Remember that delta anything is going to be the final minus the initial. So if I rewrite this as y minus y naught then I know that my initial, or sorry, my final height, the ground, which we decided was zero, that's actually gonna go away. And then what I'm gonna get is negative two g times negative y naught. A negative times a negative makes a positive. So I'm gonna get two g y naught. Okay, so now um, I have one last step. I'm sorry, I do not have one last step. Now I need to rearrange to get y naught by itself because that's the thing that we're trying to find. So to do that, we divide both sides by 2g. So y naught is the velocity squared over two times the acceleration due to gravity. So the velocity at the end squared, 10 meters per second, the whole thing squared over 2 times 1.6 meters per second squared, which gives you 100 meters squared per second squared over 3.2. The seconds squared cancel out. One of the meters cancels out, which leaves you with one meter on top, and 100 over 3.2 is um, 
31.25. So I now know the initial height of the crater. Um, it, since we set the ground equal to zero, the initial height of the crater was 31.25, which tells me that that is, in fact, the height of the crater. Okay, great. Um, you've done a really good job. We've learned how to use the acceleration due to gravity in our motion equations, and you can now solve any problem where an object is being dropped and is allowed to freely fall. Please listen to a Tom Petty song in honor of this free fall motion video.